The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, 
We have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful Father, grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall go forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Surely it is God who saves me. 
I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all of the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we? What should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us our salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make our Give, people, give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For all we need to be in Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor for the will of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us by thy spirit. Stir up thy power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let thy bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 O God, who hast made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and didst send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near, grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold, pour out thy Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Have you ever noticed that most movements tend to follow a fairly predictable pattern over the course of their lifetimes. They begin in direct response to their contexts, usually in response to a particular need in that context. Initially, they have a very grassroots, disorganized quality to them. But then, usually a handful of charismatic leaders begins to emerge. And on their watch, the movement becomes more organized and clearly defined. This is usually the movement's heyday. But after that, the movement often goes into a slow and initially almost imperceptible decline. This happens for several reasons. The context changes but the movement fails to change with it. It's answering questions people are no longer asking, 
and solving problems people are no longer experiencing. Also, the charismatic leaders that at one time were the foremost among equals have now become icons of the movement. Perhaps even after their deaths, the movement has become so identified with them that it cannot move on and continue to be fresh and relevant in a new age. Hasn't this been the case in so many of the great movements in recent history? As you've heard me note in several recent sermons, our Monday night book study group recently concluded a study of a book surveying the top the topic of liberation theology. While the contributing factors to liberation theology are myriad, it owes much of its origins to 20th century Latin America. As the movement took off, it became thoroughly wedded to names such as Gustavo Gutierrez, Leonardo Boff, Archbishop Oscar Romero, and Paulo Freire. But the author of the book that our little parish group read made some fascinating statements in its final chapter. Author Miguel de la Torre writes, maybe the very term liberation needs to be liberated. The time may well have arrived when the 1960s understanding of liberation theology has to die and let the dead bury the dead. Now writing a statement like that takes profound courage and humility. Admitting that a powerful and beloved movement needs to die, or at least any outwardly recognizable form of it needs to die, in order to make room for the new, is something that I think few of us have the guts to do. But now we get to the unique challenge of the Jesus movement that we call the church. It's not like any of the other movements that we're discussing here. It doesn't need to die at some point to make room for the new. Its founder and leader is the eternal Christ, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But the Jesus movement nonetheless faces the very same challenges that all other movements do. It can all too easily get stuck in history or get too closely identified with some of its most charismatic yet mortal leaders, forgetting that no matter how wonderful they may be in their times and places, they are but a fleeting breath in the midst of something eternal. Doesn't John the Baptist have some incredible wisdom to offer us here? The Bible doesn't offer nearly as much material on John as it might. John spent most of his life leading up to the moments that we hear about today as an Essene, one of the ascetic mystics living in caves on the shores of the Dead Sea. While the Bible makes it sound like he just appeared suddenly to the public and immediately droves of people flocked to him for baptism, this is unlikely. A far more likely scenario is that by means of compelling preaching and an extraordinary way of life, he built up a following over time. In the days leading up to the beginnings of Jesus' earthly ministry, this reached its pinnacle, and large numbers of the residents of Jerusalem and the surrounding countryside were making the eastward trek into the desert to be baptized and to hear what this remarkable figure had to say. 
And then he said the most extraordinary thing. Although he was, through the lens of biblical history, a tributary to the main current, that is the Jesus movement, this wasn't apparent at all to the people of his time. The John movement looked huge, perhaps the biggest thing in anyone's memory. And so they naturally wondered, is John the Messiah? And he gave them a very clear answer. I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Do you see what John did here? He was undoubtedly a great figure. He answered God's call to be great, and in doing so, he attained a large following and quite a bit of notoriety. But then, when the right moment came, and not one second too late, rather than letting the John movement die a slow and painful death of attrition, he came right out and ended it completely of his own accord. He got out of the way so that the true goal, the Jesus movement, could pick up where he had left off and flourish for all time. John did with his own movement exactly what our author suggested needs to be done with 1960s liberation theology. Celebrate and honor the good work that has been done and the people who accomplished it, and then sunset it purposefully in order to make room for the next phase of Christ's holy work to happen. So this begs the obvious question of today's church. How, practically speaking, can we follow the good example of John the Baptist? It's blatantly obvious that some of the expressions of the Jesus movement with which we've been familiar for most of our lives are probably a thing of the past. And believe me, I don't say this with relish. I loved the experience of going to full churches where we would loudly sing classic hymns and say familiar prayers with lots of people, most of whom you could count on seeing week after week. I thoroughly enjoyed the points in my childhood, albeit precious few, when going to church was just what one did on a Sunday morning. But just in case we weren't clear on the point that in our area and much of the Western world, this is simply no longer the way things are in the lives of most people. The pandemic came and drove the point home in ways we cannot ignore. I believe that the church as we have known it is at a point similar to where John the Baptist found himself all those years ago. Not just here at St. Bart's, but across a huge swath of the church. We're at a moment where it's perhaps time to intentionally sunset much of the way we used to be the Jesus movement in order to make room for Jesus to accomplish in us and through us the next phase of his redeeming work. What exactly this means in detail, I don't know yet. I look forward to prayerfully discerning that together in the time to come. But I do know what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean waiting for it to happen to us. John didn't wait for the public's realization that Jesus, and not he, was the Messiah to come upon him 
He proclaimed that truth loud and proud. We, too, are called to proclaim loud and proud that our past ways of being church were wonderful and glorious and that Christ now calls us into new and different and also wonderful and glorious ways of being church. And I trust that when we do that in faith and confidence, God will reveal to us what is to come next. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world, saying, Come to us, Christ, and set us free. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee, to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, 
to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our bishop, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up to you this day the Anglican Church of Canada. In our Episcopal Diocese, we pray for New Skellig Church in Inverness and St. John the Evangelist Church in San Francisco. In our local community, we pray for First Presbyterian Church in Livermore. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. And to all thy people, give heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their lives. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we lift up to you these members of our congregation, Chris, Nikki, and Grace, Trey, Joanne, and Ron. As well as those in military service, Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, Taylor, and Drake. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all in assemblies or judicial roles at every level of government, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy holy creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Ann M., Angela, Olivia, Becky, Brett M., Carol, Kathy, Dave and Mary, Doris, Dottie S., Aaron, Esteban, Helen, Helga, Janice and Bravo, James, Jennifer, Jim, John and Hiroko, Ben and Catherine, Kip, Lee, Linda, Lisa B, Laura, Marion, Marge B, Marsha R, Monty and Judy, Nick, Nina, Michael, Sandra and Henrietta, Michael E, Robert, Sally, Tamara S, the Purcell Ordstad family, Father Ron Colmer and family, the Sherman family, the Payne family, the Thayer Moore families. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. You may add other petitions and thanksgivings may be included here. And I would like to add a very happy 
first birthday to Zachary Spirit and his family. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Colin O, Corey C, Bernie S, Glennis P, Alex M, Mark B, and Dave M. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace to follow the good examples of thy saints, that with them we may par be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Come to us, O Christ, and set us free. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.